completion of Builder's Sea Trials for the future USS Ted Stevens, DDG-128, has signaled another milestone in the ongoing modernization of the United States Navy's surface combatant fleet. Conducted by Huntington Ingalls Industries Ingalls Shipbuilding Division, these trials brought the latest Arleigh Burke-class destroyer of the Flight 3 variant closer to operational service. While sea trials are a standard step in the construction of any warship, the success of DDG-128 carries broader implications for naval readiness, technological adaptation, and the balance of maritime power in the 21st century. Sea trials provide the first opportunity for a shipbuilder to validate a vessel's performance outside the confines of the shipyard. For DDG-128, these exercises tested propulsion, navigation, and integrated combat systems under realistic sea conditions. The Gulf of America became the proving ground for the destroyer's engineering resilience and operational reliability. Passing these trials means that the ship is technically sound and capable of advancing to the next phase, Navy acceptance trials and eventual commissioning. Yet beyond routine evaluations, the Ted Stevens trials offered confirmation that the Flight 3 upgrades are performing as intended, cementing this class as the backbone of future U.S. surface operations. What differentiates the Flight 3 destroyers from their predecessors is not merely incremental improvement, but a leap in combat capability defined by the inclusion of the N-SPY-6-V-1 air and missile defense radar. This next-generation sensor provides greater detection ranges, improved tracking fidelity, and the ability to handle more simultaneous threats than earlier radars. Its integration with the Aegis Combat System Baseline 10 is equally important. Together, these systems create a layered defense network capable of engaging ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, hypersonic glide vehicles, and advanced air threats with speed and precision. During the Builder's trials, the performance of these systems was a central focus, as they represent the technological heart of the ship's value. The ship's armament underscores its role as a multi-mission combatant. With 96 MK-41 vertical launch system cells, DDG-128 can deploy an array of weapons including Tomahawk land attack missiles, SM-2 and SM-6 interceptors, and evolved Sea Sparrow missiles. These capabilities allow it to strike targets ashore, defend carrier strike groups, and neutralize aerial threats in contested environments. Complementary weapons such as the MK-45 Mod 4 5-inch naval gun, phalanx close-in weapon system, lightweight torpedoes, and an advanced sonar suite enhance its flexibility across surface, subsurface, and air domains. The synergy between these systems ensures that the Ted Stevens is not a single-role vessel but a platform adaptable to a wide spectrum of naval operations. Flight 3 destroyers also incorporate significant engineering changes to sustain advanced technologies and prepare for future integration. The class has expanded electrical power generation and cooling capacity, enabling it to support high-energy sensors and potential directed energy weapons. These structural upgrades address the increasing demand for power-hungry systems in modern naval warfare. At the same time, the vessels maintain interoperability with joint and allied forces through advanced communication links such as Link-16 and cooperative engagement capability. This ensures that the Ted Stevens is not an isolated asset but a fully networked participant in distributed maritime operations. The strategic importance of these destroyers lies in their ability to project presence and deterrence in regions where maritime competition is intensifying. The Pacific Theater, where the Ted Stevens will eventually operate, is increasingly defined by challenges posed by near-peer adversaries and the proliferation of advanced missile systems. The destroyer's advanced radar and missile defense capabilities directly address these threats, offering protection not only to itself but to larger naval formations and critical assets. Its ability to conduct simultaneous offensive and defensive operations adds to the Navy's flexibility in contested waters. 
In an era where control of sea lanes and denial of adversary access are paramount, platforms like DDG-128 are essential for maintaining strategic balance. Beyond its tactical role, the ship reflects the industrial capacity and adaptability of the U.S. defense sector. Ingalls Shipbuilding, the yard responsible for the vessel, has a long history of producing surface combatants. With more than 35 Arleigh Burke-class destroyers already delivered, the shipyard has proven its ability to meet the Navy's demands despite the complexity of modern warship construction. The ongoing production of multiple Flight 3 destroyers in parallel highlights the industrial commitment to sustaining a fleet that can match evolving operational requirements. The Ted Stevens is part of a larger continuum that includes other vessels under construction, ensuring that the Navy maintains momentum in fielding high-end combatants. Recent moves by Huntington Ingalls Industries to expand its production partnerships reflect a recognition of the growing demand for these ships. Outsourcing the fabrication of outfitted structural units to other facilities across the United States will help accelerate delivery timelines. This decentralized approach mirrors the scale of the national effort required to sustain naval superiority. By drawing on a broader industrial base, the Navy and its contractors are hedging against bottlenecks and delays, thereby ensuring a steady supply of capable warships. The commissioning of the USS Ted Stevens, scheduled for mid-2026, will mark the ship's formal entry into the Pacific Fleet. At that point, it will transition from a product of industrial labor to an operational asset tasked with deterrence, power projection, and integrated defense missions. Its presence in the fleet will not only add raw combat capability but also serve as a symbol of ongoing naval modernization. For allies, the ship's arrival will reaffirm American commitment to maritime security, for adversaries, it will represent another layer of complexity in any attempt to challenge U.S. dominance at sea. Looking forward, the role of Flight 3 destroyers is likely to grow in importance as the Navy pursues concepts like distributed maritime operations and prepares for potential high-end conflict scenarios. With adversaries investing heavily in long-range precision strike systems, stealth platforms, and undersea capabilities, the U.S. Navy requires ships that can adapt rapidly and withstand complex engagements. The Ted Stevens and its sister ships embody this adaptability, combining proven hull designs with cutting-edge combat systems and room for growth into the future. The successful completion of builders' trials for DDG-128 is therefore more than a procedural step. It is a confirmation that the United States continues to field ships capable of meeting the most pressing maritime challenges of our time. As commissioning approaches, the USS Ted Stevens stands as a testament to the enduring value of the Arleigh Burke class, even as it evolves into a new technological generation. In the years ahead, its operational record will demonstrate whether the promises of Flight 3 translate into sustained superiority at sea. For now, the trials in the Gulf of America have proven that this destroyer is ready to join the legacy of its predecessors while carving out a distinct role in shaping the Navy of the future.